Hello everyone, I am Shah Nath. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today in this podcast, I'll be talking with Shashwat Mukherjee, who recently got an offer from Red Hat, as well as he also interned with Maya Data, and also he has shared his GSoC experience uh, in this video. And the bonus tip is that he also shared some advice, or you can say some tips on how you can go ahead in your journey. So stay tuned in this video, and I hope you guys like it. And if you guys like it, uh, do comment, do like this video, and share with your friends. So let's jump into the podcast. So hello everyone. Today with us we have Shashwato Mukherjee. Uh, so I would like to thank Shashwato. Uh, because he joined us for a podcast and share his experience with you guys, and he'll be telling a lot tons of experience because he has done a great things uh, in his third year. And uh, so, yeah, over to you, Shashwat. Can you just introduce yourself? Uh, uh, hi. So, yeah, I'm excited to be on this podcast. Uh, I'm Shashwat Mukherjee. I'm based out of Kolkata, India. Uh, currently, I'm pursuing a B Tech in CSE from Kit Bhuvaneshwar. Uh, I'm in third year, like Shan told you. I recently took part in uh, the Google Summer of Code uh, 2021 program as a student developer under the Thanos project, and currently I'm a software engineering intern at Red Hat. Pretty cool stuff, and uh, yeah. So now let's uh, get into the main first segment of the video. That is, uh, what you did. Uh, what are the things you did before joining Kit? Like, what are your skills which you knew before Kit, uh, before joining Kit? So, can you just tell me? Because many of the time, like, student has a doubt that uh, I don't know, I don't have any programming experience or that type of thing. So, what what did you did to actually before joining Kit? So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, before joining Kit, like uh, pretty much everyone else, I uh, prepped for JE. Uh, but yeah, that didn't really work out because I sucked at chemistry. But uh, in eleven and twelve, like those uh, grades, uh, were also the years that I kind of really got into programming. Like uh, as I had a subject related to that. So uh, I remember, like before starting eleventh grade, I managed to learn C plus plus well, and by the end of twelve, I had also kind of. Uh, managed to learn about Python and a bit of Flask uh, for web development purposes, uh, uh, which uh, I also I think I made a few simple projects as well, and uh, I learned about like Git and GitHub and what uh, what their place was and how people push their side projects over there. Uh, and yeah, I was also kind of worried, like how college life would be uh, after I got kind of finalized going to Kit. So like I, I sort of wanted to create a resume for myself as well. So that was kind of what I did uh, before uh, joining Kit. That's quite impressive because uh, many few students actually do that. And uh, great man, you did that. And with a with a follow up question, like as you told that you were preparing for JEE, so obviously like I am also I was also preparing for JEE, and I was also looking for an IIT or not even IIT because I know my IA, but I was also preparing for IIT or any other government college. So like when you like got uh, admitted into Kit, so what were your thoughts behind like you are into a private engineering college, whether whether you will like succeed or not, or whether you have like confidence or not, like or Whether you have any game plan or strategy to actually look into it, yeah. so what are your thoughts? Like uh, after I got into it, I kind of thought it would be scary, you know, like uh, as this was kind of the first time that I would be staying somewhere other than my home uh, for an extended period of time, and I was worried, like, who would be my roommate be, like, if I'll be going to you know make friends and stuff. Uh, and then also read like you know uh, or heard online that people regret not doing better in JE, and uh, I was kind of uh, scared that I'd face the same thing. Uh, but the uh, the JE thing was never uh, actually an issue for me because I didn't regret it. I was more focused on kind of progressing past that, like uh, kind of uh, learning new things related to a field that I'm excited to go into. So uh, the first time I came here, I kind of got to know about all these uh, tech clubs and societies around, particularly like Mozilla and DSC. And uh, I attended a few of the sh- uh, sessions, and I did not just like only want to attend the sessions, but I wanted to interact with the people who were taking these sessions. So I guess that was kind of like uh, a few thoughts that I had when I first came to Kit. Uh, 
like i joined actually a week later due to some uh, issues uh, like i had some festival thing to attend so uh, even then like i got to know my roommate who's a, right now a great singer and all my uh, wingmates are really amazing so yeah that was quite nice so the moral of the story is like you have to be like confident on yourself and also like you have to forget the past what has happened and just live with the present what well, i have to grow skills and as well as to uh, connect with the people who are there in college and interact with everyone that that's like a, that's a very yeah like if you aren't taking a drop year to uh, actually do those exams it's kind of better to just move on and sort of uh, learn other stuff that will be useful in you making a career so that's kind of my strategy for that that's that's wonderful man so now uh, like uh, when you came to college and all of the stuff so like what are the things you did in first year actually to make yourself better and the way you are right now so um so uh, when, as i was a first year like everyone is like uh, i wasn't that organized so to speak so uh, i didn't have like a full dedicated strategy that i wrote on a wall or something uh, but one thing that i did was i prioritized learning so and by learning i mean actually uh, building small uh, projects that kind of demonstrate uh, what i know about a particular uh, facet you know of some technology so for example say uh, i wanted to learn front end development and i wanted to learn like how front ends uh, display all the data from uh, by making certain http api calls so uh, what i did would be uh, build something that with either react uh, to uh, utilize some api say the public pokemon api and kind of display those data so this is kind of my process of learning and that is what i did throughout uh, the first year the projects uh, it might not be public it might be something that you did on your own or private you might not even push to get up but at the same time it very much helps you in learning all of these things so that's kind of what i did and i still do that now like with stuff i'm currently uh, learning so so uh, like after listening to you i i i just i can draw a conclusion that uh, every fresher should actually know git because it's a very essential tool uh, so yeah. do you agree on this thing or not uh, like even if you like not before a fresher but at least try to pick that up yeah. within first year because that will help you out a lot like yeah uh, in the future whether you're doing open source or whether you are going to be doing some sort of internship git will always uh, be there so yeah, yeah true so uh, like uh, as i know that you have got internship in my data in in your i guess in second year if i'm not wrong yeah. like in your third semester so like can you like uh, brief on that like how how you get got that opportunity as well as what was the interview process and uh, on the follow up that what are your learnings and what was your experience working with my data okay so uh, in my second year i had kind of already done uh, a lot of projects with uh, react and i was kind of primarily focused on front end so front end web development so one of my seniors who was both at dsc and mozilla Uh, sort of reached out to me informing uh, me about a front end focused intern position at my data and he refer he had referred me so i just had like one managerial interview since i was in second year so they didn't want to uh, do it that way so i had one managerial interview and there uh, after that i worked on the front end aspects of a cncf open source project of theirs called litmus chaos So, what is Litmus Chaos? It is essentially a cloud-native uh, platform that allows uh, teams of site reliability engineers or SREs and software developers to conduct uh, certain chaos engineering experiments on their uh, Kubernetes infrastructure. So, what I mean by this is, suppose say uh, you have uh, something deployed within Kubernetes. and suddenly something goes wrong maybe a node is down maybe a pod is down so do your end users get affected so uh, to kind of draw conclusions you need to do chaos engineering experiments for that so uh, i worked on the front end aspects and this work uh, primarily uh, involved referring to these figma files or figma designs and making them functional using uh, react and typescript so the team i worked with was super helpful and super nice and i managed to learn a whole lot uh, from them so how to work with teams how to uh, navigate large code bases how ci works how changes are pushed out uh, via re- releases and what the cadence of a particular releases and all of that 
And so I even learned a ton about Kubernetes while working there, which I hadn't expected, but I learned a ton, like how to uh, use Minikube, what port forwarding is, uh, how stuff is deployed within Kates, what the idea uh, behind that is, uh, the types of resources and architectures uh, and all of that. And uh, while I was there, like they formed a new com uh, company out of the Maya data called Chaos Native, which is where the team I work with works now. And it's this amazing startup behind Litmus Chaos now. So I'd say the experience really uh, was educational and exposed me to the entire uh, like amazing cloud native community with so many uh, amazing people and projects. So I was really grateful for my time there. Nice, nice, nice. Good to hear that. And uh, with the follow up question, like um, as Litmus Chaos is an open source uh, open source uh, like organization or maritime open source thing so like what are your thoughts on open source and like uh, how open source helped you to get what you are right now as well as like the most important thing which i f found out that connections are very important to get an internship as well so yeah that that's pretty cool so can you give some light so on I that think, yeah. i think like open source is pretty much all around us like whether you are a front end engineer, back end engineer, uh, mobile, or something else, like uh, open source is it, it's what powers uh, modern day software kind of. And uh, for students, especially students like you and me, it's very important to try at least and contribute to open source. Like it's entirely optional. You might not want to do that. But it's very important at the same time because it helps you build connection uh, connections with uh, not just engineers from like uh, companies in your city or like in India, but uh, globally, right? And so uh, you can actually, and plus these engineers will get to know you and get to know how you work when you make a pull request, like uh, how clean your code is, and they'll have some sort of impression on you. So uh, these connections are very important uh, in today's world while getting some sort of, whether that be internship or some sort of position. So yeah, open source can really help students uh, uh, flourish in uh, the tech communities. And uh, as far as, uh, but also it's very, uh, what do you say? Like, since this is something that you do in your free time, it might get stressful. So it's also important to take care of your mental health and not get burnt out uh, while contributing to open source. So, yeah. that That's also one point to consider. So, like, uh, can you tell me, like, how do you manage your time? Because you have college, college studies as well, you have assignments, you have exams, a lot of stuff, as well as learning uh, some new technologies and doing some intern work or open source. Like, how do you manage your time? So, can you give a light on that? Yeah, so manage uh, time. Yeah, so that's kind of like a very... Uh, like Ankur Varikru type of question. How, how do you manage time? Do you make mm -hmm. excellent sheets and all? But no, like nothing of that sort. What I tend to do is I use some sort of app like either Google Keep or something and just make a note of what I need to do and that priority. It's not a to-do list per se, but rather uh, a brain dump of like what I need to do, what I need to learn or what is needed, what, uh, what should I send out today and that kind of thing. And I try to center my day around those kind of notes. So that really helps me. Uh, for what it's worth, like managing your time uh, as a student who is also contributing uh, outside and either has an internship, uh, that's kind of really difficult thing to do. Like uh, people uh, struggle with that. I struggle with that uh, too. But uh, it's essential to kind of have, follow some structure, whether that be via calendar or like a keep notes thing, which I do. Uh, and it's uh, important to stay organized. Like you should have everything within reach so that you don't spend time uh, finding out like what you missed, if that makes sense. Yeah, that, that, that's quite a nice strategy. So now let's, as, I, as we have talked about open source and uh, let's talk about your GSOC experience and kind of like we have like gone through the same phase. We, we both were talking around like when to apply, like what are the things, what are enrollment you helped me with the proof of enrollment thing and all of the stuff on the proposal and all of the stuff so can you share experience that uh, how you just got into, like how, how you decided to actually contribute to gsoft and i know it, it just got with the flow you just got with the flow and just applied but uh, what are your experience and what are your thoughts so yeah okay so i think uh, last year around march 
uh, I started to kind of delve in, into other open source uh, CNCF projects because I wanted to expand my horizons with cloud native and start contributing more seriously to open source, uh, preferably somewhere with uh, like a React and Golang code base as well, because I kind of wanted to learn and work with Go and had some prior experience with React. And uh, yeah, like I knew back then about GSOC and I thought that maybe uh, this year I could actually apply to uh, since I had some experience from the My Data internship. So I started like exploring and came across uh, the CNCF mentoring repository on GitHub. Like, uh, and I was exploring the different project ideas uh, that were previously uh, there as well as for the current year. So as I was exploring uh, various code bases and sort of trying to make sense of what I could work with, like uh, when I found uh, about the Thanos project. And I mean, uh, this process is generally very overwhelming as you will not know about a, a lot of things and you won't have any idea on what maybe a particular project does. And it's completely okay. Like this is normal. If you knew everything, you wouldn't need a mentorship, right? And so uh, I uh, got interested in the Thanos project. Uh, and it's basically a set of uh, composed a highly available metric system with a set of components and with basically unlimited storage capability. And it can be added seamlessly on existing Prometheus deployments. So Thanos, uh, they had pr pr proposed a nice project idea for GSOC, which was building out uh, a CLI tool that will kind of help them, you know, automate their documentation processes. And this tool was called MDocs. So documentation everywhere is a pain. Like if you're a dev who has written documentation, you probably know this. And uh, because of formatting inconsistencies, uh, it might break your website or it might make uh, GitHub rendering. Broken links are super annoying. And even uh, simply outdated code examples and outputs are also annoying. So open source documentation is usually written in Markdown, right? And mm -hmm. so if you want to make you sure your docs uh, are uh, composed into a website, you would usually use some tool uh, like Hugo, which kind of does this for you. But then you'd also have to write uh, dozens of hacky shell scripts so that it's referenceable from GitHub as well as your website. And it won't be perfect. So MDOX kind of aimed to solve all of that and essentially automate that via CI. So I remember I started uh, to uh, make a PR and sort of independently contribute to it at first to MDocs. And that's a big factor in getting selected as well, because if you just keep asking for guidance and spam issues, you know, like with comments, like I would like to work on this, or can you please guide me? Uh, or can you give me some direction? Then it's simply not possible for uh, an open source maintainer to uh, give you time or to help you in any uh, constructively because they are they don't have the bandwidth to help each and every one and they are like too busy to be able to do that so i started contributing uh, to mdocs and uh, pretty soon i was in contact with like the maintainer of the project and uh, i applied with the proposal and got selected for gsoc so uh, my mentor was Bartek. He is a principal software engineer at Red Hat. He's the co-author of Thanos Project and a CNCF observability tag tech lead. He's also writing a book called Efficient Go. And uh, uh, through, this, uh, through this experience of GSOC, I learned so much. Like I can't uh, uh, kind of enclose this in a video, but like uh, I mean, not just about Golang, but so many facets about open source maintainership, how to be uh, pragmatic with uh, features for a certain code base, how to write clean code and even stuff about, you know, the monitoring ecosystem and career paths like SRE. Uh, and I'm just uh, extremely grateful for that. So uh, at the end, I was uh, able to successfully complete the project and actually managed to uh, ship it or like land it in production, so to speak. So right now MDocs runs on Thanos's uh, GitHub CI, as well as projects like um, Prometheus Operator, uh, Observatorium, and Efficient Go E2E, uh, stuff like that. So, yeah. For that, congratulations, a big, big con congratulations, because actually, uh, it is actually great because your stuff are going into uh, going out for production and companies are using it. And as we know, like CNC is a big organization and they have a lot of tons of projects. They are not only participating in GSOC, they're in LFX and other stuff as well. So yeah, that was great, man. So now like getting into it, like as we have 
recently like cracked in red hat interview so can you just tell us that uh, how you actually got that opportunity as well as the interview process and the experience you had in 2 to 3 days so yeah yeah so like after gsoc uh, my mentor who works at red hat he referred me to uh, for a position as part of his team who since he knew uh, he knew me and like he knew what i could code about so uh, he referred me to it and so i had like four interviews uh, one was an hr one uh, one was a technical one another was a scenario based one and finally a uh, manager one uh, it one was uh, the technical one wasn't anything data structure related uh, Uh, it wasn't based on that it was rather more relevant to uh, my experience with uh, kubernetes and golang and uh, the previous uh, experiences that i had uh, so yeah that was kind of a scenario based one was about like how you would handle uh, different scenarios while working in a team so that was kind of my interview experience but yeah this differs from person to person like if you're applying to red hat in india or somewhere else and you might get a data structure based interview as well so i just started my role uh, here last week and i'm just like super amazed and in awe of all the amazing people working there so really hope to learn um, a lot from them nice nice that 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 is very nice uh, experience as well like i i i just can draw a conclusion that the thing you did uh, was purely based on open source and as you did open source you got this this opportunity so yeah. that is that is quite good and so the last uh, segment of the video is that uh, if you want to give tips to students uh, who are actually want to get interview uh, like get interview or who are new to their programming world what are the mistakes they usually make and like touch on those things and also like some tips towards G- to gsoc so yeah um, yeah so like my first like tip or like sort of what do you say advice would be have fun like this is something i think like a lot of students especially in india keep missing which is they treat it in the same fashion as uh, like work or study or something like je as something that you have to do like that's not it like you'll be burnt out super fast if you try to do things that way so it's better to have fun with it like uh, while you're learning maybe make some project that uh, you want to make like something that you find particularly interesting right and that's kind of the first advice the second is that everything is super complex and overwhelming like tech is complex that's how stuff works so you'll be overwhelmed every step of the way whether that be in open source or an interview or as your career as a software developer and that's normal so it's okay to be prepared for that you will have some like doubts at first about uh, whether i'll be able to do it or not but uh, it's okay like everyone goes through that phase so it's better to be prepared and the third thing that uh, i would like to advise is and uh, know when to ask and what to ask and it's important to create a, a balance uh, when asking uh, people for help um, so like you know uh, you know like uh, shan you might have also uh, received started receiving uh, dms about uh, gsoc like yeah. uh, this has started so uh, like even before i used to but now it's more so the questions are usually like hi i want to do gsoc can you guide me can you guide me now so this is a very uh, odd thing to do like this is very spammy and uh, don't do this like try to figure out what is what you can ask someone that you can't actually ask google like that's a rule of thumb that you should follow when uh, you're asking people questions or you're asking somebody for help and try to be as independent as possible like try to unlock yourself and uh, maybe make a, a first pr before you dm someone like that helps out a lot in open source or or just uh, keep uh, notes of your own which you can forward to certain people that hey i would like uh, help about this particular thing that i can't really find resources for anywhere so that these people can guide you since uh, open source maintainers are super busy they have their own jobs plus they're helping out in uh, these projects so they don't have the bandwidth to help everyone right so uh, that's my final piece of advice so, yeah 
rather than like uh, as you told that you you are like i was also getting dms that how you can contribute to tensor for how you can contribute to cnc as you as also you have got the questions like how to do this so rather than they can ask that uh, like in this project as you, have, you as you did like uh, what are the things or what are the complexities they can discuss what are the issues uh, rather they can discuss rather than asking questions like how to get into this or because there are many youtube videos on that that how to get into this or well, blah 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 sure. and so like we can kind yeah. of reply to the dms because we have the bandwidth but uh, when it comes to some maintenance they will not be able to right so it's better to kind of unlock yourself as much as possible makes sense and also like i feel that uh, i have also seen people do, were telling that how to crack google and, sorry how to crack gsoc and about that of the things and i guess these things came from a particular syllabus which we studied in class 10 yeah. and 12 that these are the things we need to study this is the je syllabus and that mentality actually came here and now people are getting into fang right now that how to get into fang they are not enjoying the process they are just going with the fix syllabus and they went out quite quick i think that yeah yeah that, that, like, that like that like this is something that's very particular to india i feel because uh, like if you go to any open source project and you like uh, sort of search with like hi can you guide me so the comments that you'll find is majorly from india so uh, i don't know why this happens but it happens so uh, it's better to like uh, streamline the process and like have fun while you're at it so yes that would make sense so like one last question which i want to ask like personally you can say like uh, how you deal with burnouts or like uh, like obviously for a person it's not uh, it's not acceptable also to actually give 100% at every day so how to deal okay. with that and how you spend your weekends so um yeah so uh for me particularly i uh i try to keep a balance between what i'm working on and like what my mind is thinking about because it might happen like you're not in front of a monitor maybe but you're still thinking about some problem so i try to keep a balance as much as possible so far i haven't been burnt out yet so i don't really have experience of getting burnt out but yeah this happens so i try to stay wary of it at all times and Uh, as for weekends uh, usually i try to binge watch something or read a book something like that uh, i mean i'm pretty boring so weekends <laughs> so nice. that's 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 completely like uh, it is like that yeah cool man that's that's pretty awesome so also like i'll be giving all all of your links in the social media links in the description and uh, also your uh, medium article links like your medium profile and your dev2 profile so that people can read your blogs and all of the stuff and also i will give the link of your proposal so that people can get uh, get access through it and can see that what you did uh, so yeah so uh, let's wrap up the podcast and thanks for joining uh, so thanks for having me yeah. yeah it was my pleasure so bye bye and guys if you like if like connect with shashwat if you have any uh, kind of doubts regarding this project or any cncf project or any dev related issue that you want to do go lang or something like that like if you want to do build any project or kubernetes is great at it and i guess you should have a talk with him he's a very nice guy so yeah so if you like this video consider uh, subscribing the channel as well as liking the video and share it with your friends so that they also get to know about all of the things about open source about internships as well as about dsocs so yeah so bye bye